I'm Pastor Hal York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 10. On our farm back in Maine, we lived at the base of a mountain. It's called Mars Hill Mountain. There was at the base of that mountain a small little cabin that our family had built back in the woods. And we used to have some family get-togethers there and cookouts and a lot of good memories. It was just a small little cabin. There's an old cook wood cook stove in it, one bed, one large table, no electricity, no running water, just one room. The only running water we had was a little brook that ran very close by the cabin that flowed from a spring further up the mountain, the best water you ever tasted. But you've probably all heard the term of babbling brook. Well, that's what this little brook was. As it ran over the rocks, it was just a very comforting sound to listen to, to sit by the brook. Even from inside the cabin, you could hear it. I'm sure we've all heard babbling brooks. But one thing about a babbling brook, it babbles all the time. At one o'clock in the afternoon, at two o'clock in the morning, it never stops, which you would expect. But Proverbs verse 8 uses a phrase that makes me think of, of that brook, and I'll read the verse and see if you can see what it was that made me think of it. Proverbs 10, 8 says, The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. It says it again in verse 10. All through chapter 10, we see the contrast between the wise and the foolish. And much of that contrast has to do with how they use their tongue. In verse 8, the contrast is he who receives commandments, or one who listens to others. A babbling fool is one who just listens to himself, and he comes to ruin. The wise of heart, Proverbs says, will receive commandments. Well, why? Because he's been taught to listen. He's humble. He's been taught that he doesn't know it all, that he, he needs to be teachable, that he, that he fears the Lord. He needs the instruction of the, Lord, the word of the Lord in his heart and in his mind. That we never learn anything when we're talking. A wise person has learned the need for instruction. He fears the Lord. He needs guidance. He's asking questions. And we see this all through the book of Proverbs. Contrast that, however, with the fool, the babbling fool. He's wise in his own eyes, he's proud, he's filled with his own ways, he despises reproof and instruction, he does not fear God, he loves the sound of his own voice, he's filled with his own ways. If you read chapter 10 and jot down all the things just in this chapter, it tells us about the mouth of the fool. It's very interesting. It says that the fool will not listen, that he winks with his eye, that he mocks instruction, he conceals violence, the mouth of a fool brings ruin. So much of what happens to a fool is linked to his mouth because the mouth is linked to his heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why is he coming to ruin? Because he refuses to be warned. He refuses to be instructed. In verse 21, it says, Fools die for lack of sense. In verse 24, it says, What the wicked dread will come upon him. They do not know why they stumble, it says elsewhere. They do not learn from the others' mistakes, but go on and are punished. Well, why is that? Well, one simple reason is they won't listen. For the fool, a good offense is the best defense. How do you avoid having to listen? You never stop talking, or babbling, if you want to call it. It goes on and on and on. It's sort of you want to, it's like Babylon, babble on and on and on. Wisdom or foolishness are hard issues. It's not about education. It's not about economic standing. It's about the heart. The wise has a new heart, changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ, a heart that wants to listen to the word of God, to read the word of God. He understands the importance of listening to others and seeking wise counsel. He's quick to hear and slow to speak. Now that little brook, you could make it stop babbling, but you'd have to go upstream and build a dam and the, the water would no longer flow over the rocks and the noise would stop, the babbling would stop. But you really haven't stopped it. You've just postponed it. You haven't dealt with the source of where the water comes from. And the same goes for a fool. You can put duct tape over a fool's mouth so he can't talk. You can tie his hands and his feet so he can't go anywhere or make any gestures, obscene gestures. You could put him in prison even. And he may not be able to act foolish outwardly. But you have not changed the person. You have not dealt with the source, which is the heart. You take the duct tape off, you untie them, let them out, and they will be immediately begin to show they are still fools, evidenced by how they talk, how they live, and how they treat others. Wise living is a heart issue, a heart that's been changed by the, 
grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Wise living is learning to listen. Learning to listen with the desire to obey what we hear. To receive, to receive instruction knowing full well that we need it, that we want it, we long for it, because we want to bring honor and glory to God and to know his joy and purpose for our lives. And so our prayer needs to be, Lord, help us to learn to listen. Help us to receive your commandments with joy that we might obey them, that we might learn, that we might live in the joy and the peace and just the, the abundant life that you've called us to live is just laid out for us in your word through the power of your spirit living in us. And more and more as the days go on, may we grow in this desire to learn, learning to listen. So maybe we'll be quick to hear and slow to speak as we live in the trenches of life to the glory of God and to the good of others. May God bless.